Hi, my name is Paddy Hirsch. I'm a senior editor at Marketplace. And today I want to talk about capital structure. The reason being because it's integral to this whole issue of swapping debt for equity or preferred stock for common stock. In order to understand how all of that works, you need to have a good feel for how the capital structure of a company works. So uh, we shopped around for a little analogy that we could use to describe capital structure. And here's one that we came up with. So here is uh, your average uh, passenger airplane. Okay. All right. It's, uh, okay, it's kind of a wonky looking aircraft, but we can all recognize it by the wings and the tail and the fact that uh, this is a slightly unusual aircraft because it's only got uh, one exit door at the front here. Okay, only one door. Here's the ramp that comes out. And uh, the aircraft is configured along the normal lines. At the front of the aircraft we have first class, then we've got business. Then we've got uh, this new thing that you'll see if you go on board the aircraft these days, in particular American Airlines, I can say with experience, which is the, uh, the, the um, it's like the uh, Coach Plus. Okay, so we have Plus. And then after that, of course, we've got Coach. Everyone in the rear with the gear. Now, if this aircraft uh, lands heavily on the ground or crashes, all right, because it's only got one door, it means there's a very specific uh, exit routine for everybody. First class gets out first, business class comes out next, then it's Coach Plus, and then Coach. Everybody's going to have to come out in that order. And that's kind of like what it's like for a company uh, whenever a company collapses, okay? Because these classes um, also equate to certain asset classes. So like first class are the loans, okay? Business class, like the bonds. Plus, uh, plus Coach class is like preferred stock, okay? And then Coach class is like common stock, okay? So why do, these, uh, why do these asset classes equate to these sort of classes on board the aircraft? Well, it's all about risk, okay? The further back in the plane that you sit, the more risk that you take, okay? Because if the plane crashes, then it's less likely that you're going to get out if the, uh, you know, because of the, the, the priority of exit. So say this, pl uh, if they say this plane cr uh, crashes, the loan holders get out first, then the bond holders, then the preferred stockholders, and then the common stockholders. And when, and when they, they get out whole, that is to say they get all their money back. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, these delineations here, you see that they kind of fall into two. We have debt here, which is the loans and the bonds, and then you have equity. Okay, but uh, preferred equity is slightly different because preferred equity looks like equity, but it's actually structured more like debt because there's this payment every uh, every month that uh, that the uh, the company has to make. So all of these issues here. These asset classes, loans, bonds, and preferred stock, these guys all receive, or these people all receive a payment every month. Okay? So now if we look at this, this, uh, this debt and equity tranche, we can see that, um, that we, can, we can see what the, the company's leverage is, what its ratio of debt to equity is. So say in this case we have a, an equity ratio, a debt to equity ratio of six to one. Okay? It means that there's six times the amount of debt than there is to, to the amount of equity. Okay. Now, if a plane, even at that, those leverage ratios, a plane can sort of fly straight and level, you know, no problems, as long as it's making enough money to service the debt, as to say, to keep paying the loans, the interest rate on the loans and the bonds, and to keep paying the preferred shareholders. But what happens whenever the company starts making less money, say in a recession? Well, suddenly it starts to head towards the ground. You know, in the case of Chrysler, it starts to go to, you know, head towards a crash. So what, what happens? Well, you want to write the aircraft. And one of the ways to write it is to convert some of these issues, some of these asset classes, into common stock. Okay, so you could ask the preferred stockholders, say, to convert to common stock. And what will that do? Well, it means that you've got, you don't have to pay so much every month because you don't have to pay these preferred shareholders. And maybe you go to the bondholders and you say, hey guys, you know, would you mind converting your bonds to common stock? And, you, and if you did that, if you managed to convince them to do that, well, once again, you know, you've reduced the amount of interest payment that you have to make every month. But it also reduces your leverage. So say, for example, these preferred guys and these bond guys, they all decided to convert to common stock. Well, what does that do? Well, it means that you've cut your leverage down. Your leverage is now down to, say, two to one. Okay? It means you're flying much more steadily. It means you've got much more people in coach now. Okay, coach is much larger. Ec your equity is much larger in comparison to your debt, which means that you've rebalanced the aircraft and you're flying much more straight and level again. Okay, so what's the incentive of these people to convert their bonds or their preferred stock into common stock? Well, the incentive is that if you don't do that, there's a possibility that the plane could or the company could founder, the company could hit the ground. And if the company does hit the ground, then it's going to, we're talking about a liquidation or a, bank, a bankruptcy and potentially a liquidation. And if there is a liquidation, well, you're going to have to be assessing the situation and saying to yourself, okay, 
if this, if this plane is liquidated, how much likelihood is there that I'm going to get my money back? Because the people that are going to get their money back first are the guys in first class, the loan holders. Only, once the, only when the loan holders are completely paid off are the bondholders going to get their money. And only when the bondholders are totally paid off is everybody else going to get their money. So if you're a bondholder, in this case, and you're thinking about converting to common stock, you're going to say to yourself, am I going to get my money back if we crash? Or is it better for me to try and rebalance the aircraft, take a haircut, a so-called haircut, that is to say, convert uh, your bonds into equity, which is probably going to be worth less than the bonds are worth at this point, but with the... Uh, the the, the thoughts that if the plane starts to pull up, if the company starts to improve, then your equity is going to be worth more further down the line. That's the decision that these people have to make. And that's, and that's the, uh, the case that's made to them whenever the company or the restructuring managers or whatever it may be are trying to get people to convert from debt or from preferred stock into common stock in order to rebalance the balance sheet of the company, in order to rebalance the capital structure and make it uh, more likely that the company will survive. Of course, <laughs> the bondholders may decide, you know what, Maybe we'll wait to see what happens if the, if the plane steams into the ground. Maybe we'll wait to see how bad the crash is. Maybe we'll wait to see what the recovery potential of the company is and whether or not I can get paid out at the end. But let me tell you, on the way down, while the plane is heading down and they're making that decision, if they make the wrong decision and everything crashes, well, it's going to leave everybody, even the first class, the loan holders, everybody, very badly, needing a drink.